I had a bit of an odd experience during a recent overseas vacation trip. See, I thought it would be a great idea to carry with me some ultra-portable, low-footprint solo board gaming for the long flight. As soon as we reached altitude, I was ready to pick a game and kill some time. Hmm. Let's see. What would Ricky Royal do? Let's play some Mage Knights. Yes, yes indeed. Let's do that. However, while setting up, flight staff approached me. Excuse me, sir? Um, yes ma'am? I'm afraid you can't do that. Do what? Play a board game with that much table footprint mid-flight. But Ricky Royal says, you need to put the game away now, sir. Um... Me no comprende English, only Espanol... <laughs> Welcome, I'm Robert, and I guess I need to rethink what qualifies as an ultra-portable, low-footprint board game. I definitely wouldn't want to raise the ire of airline staff again, would I? Just kidding. Obviously, none of that actually happened, and I don't even own Frosthaven or the Isofarian Guard as of the recording of this video yet. Those are just ludicrous examples of big, heavy games that I could think of, but if there's any other games that you think uh, that fit that category, go ahead and put them in the comment section. I'll be interested to see what other ridiculous games uh, you think would be a challenge to play uh, while uh, on an airplane trip. Uh, I have seen people raise this question before. Uh, what kind of games are small enough or low footprint enough that uh, they're viable to play uh, on an airplane? Um, and that's what we're going to discuss today. One interesting factoid I found while doing research for this video is that there's a subcategory of products on Amazon uh, just for airplane tray related stuff, which I thought was uh, wild. But uh, I was researching uh, what the average size uh, roughly of an airplane tray could be, and there's just way too many variables. Uh, so here's what I'm going to go with for this video. Um, I'm going to work on an area that is slightly smaller uh, than a letter-sized paper or a A4-sized paper. And I'm pretty sure that I'm cutting myself short compared to the average airplane tray that you might encounter. Uh, however, I would rather keep it that way uh, with the games that I'm going to talk about today. I want to make sure that uh, if it fits uh, here in general, I'm pretty sure that you should be able to play uh, these games that I'm going to talk about on any airplane tray. But before we get into that, hmm. I think there's something missing. Ah, there we go. Okay, and now another thing I want to mention is uh, on the subject of rolling dice, because uh, there are some games here that I'm gonna cover uh, where one of the components and part of the game is gonna be rolling die. So uh, what I recommend you do uh, so that you reduce the amount of noise as much as possible is uh, get one of these dice rolling cups uh, from uh, Amazon or something. Uh, I've had this for a while and it's a pretty good way of uh, quieting down the noise when rolling. And another thing I also do is uh, I have this felt bag. Uh, you can just uh, find any kind of felt material that you have and there's a pretty quiet way of uh, rolling dice. Okay, uh, So um, this is what I would do uh, if I want to take some of these games with me on a plane. Uh, just bring these two things and it really uh, shouldn't bother uh, your neighbor too much. Um, and they're probably going to be wearing headphones anyway, and with the jet lag and all, uh, not jet lag, uh, jet uh, engine sound, you should be fine. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's start by talking about a couple of really awesome games you can play with just a standard deck of cards. First, we have Regicide, all right? And this is a game that uh, you can download the rules for free, or uh, you can also purchase uh, the official illustrated Regicide decks, okay? Uh, I just used this bicycle deck and I downloaded and printed the rules and as you can see uh, you can fit the game just fine here and this is a hand management deck, uh, a possibly hand management deck where you're trying to go through 
all the jacks, queens, and kings, and this should take you, depending on how long uh, uh, you uh, think to make decisions, it should take you at least half hour, uh, I would uh, um, estimate. Uh, I know it takes me quite a bit, uh, so if I know that I'm going to be waiting in an area for a while, I love taking this with me, and it'll keep me busy for at least a half hour, okay? Uh, and you have your deck discard pile, the uh, the possible jokers uh, there uh, according to difficulty and then you have the pile that you need to go through and then you have your hand that really is said as you can see it's very space efficient okay uh, so that is a uh, regicide also using a standard deck of cards is dungeon solitaire tomb of the four kings and i do plan to post a full review of this game system because it is pretty interesting i'll explain more about it but uh, and when I do get around to doing that, I'll leave a link. But, uh, so this is a game, it's a, it's a dungeon crawler that utilizes either a standard deck of cards or a tarot deck. And normally it does occupy a lot more room. I'll leave up a picture to see how much room, it, it, you know, it can be a pretty uh, big table hog. Uh, however, uh, what happens is, so uh, in this game, uh, as you delve deeper into the dungeon, you're going to, uh, encounter rooms and every time that you finish uh, resolving a room you leave that little pile of cards behind representing the finished room and you're gonna start lining them up, lining, lining them up as you go deeper. Now um, the only reason why this game could occupy a lot of space is because you need to keep track of how deep uh, you've gone but uh, I have a little trick so uh, what I do is I just play the game right and I have uh, I have my health points here, I have the torches, I have the discard pile, the deck, and then my inventory. And as I go deeper in, into the dungeon, you can just write down uh, how many rooms you've completed. And when you turn around in order to escape the dungeon, you just write it down. And that's uh, and this way you can keep track of how deep you've gone without having to occupy an entire table. And as you can see, you can fit the game pretty neatly in a small area. You just need to keep track of how deep you go using some other method like this. And I also want to mention that uh, there's a, a mini-sized tarot deck that you can buy uh, if, you want to, it, if you want this to occupy even less room. Uh, and I think it's gorgeous. I'll, uh, I'll leave a picture up so that you see which uh, tarot deck I'm referring to. And not, these leaves I cut myself, okay? There's no sleeve that'll fit this precisely uh, in case anyone asks, but um, uh, but yeah, uh, if you want an even smaller uh, area, you can use one of these mini tarot decks, of which there's a couple choices. But yeah, um, and if you want to unlock, uh, so you can download the uh, Tomb of the Four Kings rule set for free so that you can play with a standard deck of cards. Now for the tarot deck, you're going to need the Dungeon Solitaire book, all right? Um, uh, so that you unlock a whole uh, lot more that, uh, for the system. I think this is a really cool system, okay, uh, if you want to get the most out of it. So like I said, when I do get, uh, when I do get around to reviewing it, I'll leave a link, right? Because there's a lot more that I want to discuss with this Dungeon Solitaire game system. But awesome, uh, awesome game, and you can start with just a deck of cards on the free rule set. Dungeon Solitaire. Next, we have Maiden's Quest. This is one of the various in-hand games that I'm going to talk about for this video. Uh, so basically, this is a dungeon crawler uh, that you play entirely in your hand. Um, so no board needed, which is great. Uh, this is a great travel package with lots of variability. And the variability comes from the different Maidens that you can choose from. So uh, the premise of the game is that uh, you're a Maiden trapped in a tower and you need to escape by... Um, either just uh, finding the door and unlocking it or uh, defeating the bad guy of which or boss basically and, uh, it can be a guy or a, a gal as well and uh, there's uh, lots of different maidens lots of different bosses lots of different companions that uh, are added to the deck during setup uh, just look at how much content this game comes with all right uh, with the different uh, maidens loot uh, uh, bad um, uh, bad guys and whatnot and uh, yeah so lots of variability in this package sadly the game is out of print uh, I do hope that it gets a reprint in the future uh, one thing I'll mention uh, apparently uh, so I got a used copy of this and it came with the uh, fan uh, the 
uh, this is a fan made version of the rules where they rearranged the rule book in a more logical in a more logical way apparently the original rule book left a lot to be desired from what I what I read uh, so someone uh, you know tried to reorganize it a bit better and uh, a lot of people say that this is pretty much mandatory if you want to uh, learn the game. Uh, the game does have a lot going on, uh, but for what it offers, for a travel package and something that you can basically put in your pocket, it's pretty remarkable. And um, and there's even achievements for you to unlock things. So uh, I think this is a really, really, really lovely uh, package. So really cool in-hand game, no board needed, uh, and lots of re replayability. Uh, so that's Maiden's Quest. Next, we have Decula, and this is a card game that you can purchase from the Game Crafter or you can download the free print and play files. I made a full review of this game a while ago, I'll leave a link to that, keep in mind that it's one of my earlier uh, reviews, and uh, definitely I could have improved a few things, but uh, I'll leave it there in case you're interested. So. Uh, this is a card game that, as you can see, it doesn't need to occupy a lot of room. Uh, the goal is to go through the deck uh, while building your castle, your decadent uh, Dracula castle. And you need to keep the visitors in check. And uh, if and you lose, there's a couple different loss conditions. Uh, you're basically kind of building a bit of a engine-ish uh, board and you're comboing cards of each other. Uh, the illustrations are gorgeous, a pretty fun and simple game, you'll learn, you'll learn it in a couple minutes. And uh, you don't need to have everything spread out, you could just keep things, uh, slide them on top of each other, uh, or you can, you can even stack them as you build your uh, castle. But you also have the energy tracker here, which you can rotate and you can just stack your visitors. Uh, and you have your discard pile here. But as you can see, I think uh, this is another uh, cool a uh, simple uh, portable game. It's just a small deck of cards uh, that you can take with you on trips and it doesn't occupy a whole lot of uh, space. Uh, gorgeous illustrations, uh, fun, quick gameplay, pretty portable. And again, there's a link to the review in case you want to find out more. And that's Decula. Next, we have At The Helm. This is an 18 card deck builder from Button Shy Games. And if you've played this game already, you might be calling me crazy for thinking that uh, I could fit it in a smaller area here. Hear me out. Uh, I do use a component that is not included in the game to reduce fiddliness. Uh, so you need to keep track of that number uh, for which the game tells you to tuck a horizontal unused card underneath to keep track of that number you see there, right? Uh, so what I did instead was I just used these clips that I bought from the Game Crafter to keep track of my goal. Uh, in the game, you have to uh, finish goals before you run out of time or health, all right? And you use this character card to keep track of your health. So I just have this clip right here, and you can keep track of your health like that, and that way it doesn't occupy as much room. And uh, you have your deck, you're going to have your hand, right? This is the market, and the market needs to be arranged like that as per game mechanics, all right? So they need to be in a grid, and they need to be randomized in four uh, columns like that. Uh, so... Uh, then you have your deck and if you want to save some space what you can do is just uh, rotate your used cards for your discard pile and t and tuck them under the deck and I think that uh, this is viable it might be pushing it a bit but I think for a wallet game I think it's a pretty nice experience that uh, you should be able to fit on uh, most airplane trays and like I said I did cut myself a, a bit short here I'm pretty sure you probably will have a bit more room like this so you should be fine. Uh, so yeah, that's at the helm. Next, we have Skulls of Sedlek, and this is a game that I've talked about in the past. It's another button shy wallet game. However, I'm specifically referring to uh, the flip and write version of the game. So this is a free file that you can download to turn the game into a flip and write. Normally, it is a card only game that actually takes up quite a bit of space, but uh, with this, you can just download and print it and it turns it into a flip and write, and as you can see, this is pretty much all the room that you're gonna need. Uh, so you flip a couple of cards, and then uh, if you laminate the sheet, you can uh, just use a dry erase, and you just draw skulls, and there you go, that's simple. And it doesn't take that long, and it's pretty, it's pretty fun, and the game is just great in its own right without the flip and write version, so you kind of get two for one if you decide to go with Skulls of Sadlek, but uh, just Skulls of Sadlek flip, flip and write. I do recommend. Uh, I'm still due for this, but 
Uh, I want to get an expansion uh, just to add a bit more variability. Uh, the game does this does support you uh, adding at least one expansion. Uh, so just to make it a bit more interesting. So I'm uh, I'm overdue for that. But yeah, uh, schools of sad leg flip and ride. All right, moving on. We have D Day Dice Pocket. Uh, I am a huge fan of. D-Day Dice Second Edition, one of my favorite solo board games, and this is a bit of a spin-off off of that. And sadly, it is uh, out of print, it seems, and it commands high prices if you wanted to get it on the third market. But uh, there's some interesting stuff going on with this. So it is a package that includes two different games using uh, the dice, all right? Uh, so you're going to have D-Day Dice Express and D-Day Dice Battle. Uh, so now, in my opinion, D-Day Dice Battle, there's little to no uh, meat in that game. Uh, nothing really goes on, uh, in my opinion. It's just, just roll dice and see what happens, right? Now, D-Day Dice Express is a bit uh, of a richer experience. Uh, so much like in the main game, uh, you're going to have uh, one of six uh, beaches that you're going to try to uh, reach the bunker um, to. Uh, so you have the cards here that have the different maps with different challenges so you're gonna start uh, here and you're gonna roll uh, you're gonna roll the axis dice okay uh, and then uh, and then you need to roll your color dice to uh, match whatever comes out okay and as you move closer and closer to the bunker there's gonna be more axis uh, dice and there's gonna be different challenges that that you're gonna face in each part of the beach okay uh, now uh, these games are not uh, these games are all right time killers uh, now if you happen to find a copy at a decent price uh, it's it's pretty good there's folks that really enjoy it uh, for sure there is one little thing that you can do to enrich this package and get more out of it though uh, there happens to be a free print and play version of the original first edition D Day Dice, all right, and basically it's the rule book and these two beaches, all right, the some of the uh, beginner beaches. You have Exercise Tiger, okay, and then you have Omaha Beach. And if you print them and laminate them, uh, you can fit them back in the box, okay. Uh, so if you don't want to laminate them, you could simply uh, just uh, you know uh, print several copies and bring them with you. And basically, this turns the game into a, a roll and ride, uh, like an extra, a third game that you could include in the box. A roll and ride where you're gonna have the the beach, uh, sorry, the map and the respective sheet uh, that is supposed to uh, correspond to it, and you can include the dice that are included in the box. And you basically have a full fledged um, uh, D-Day dice, first edition, with you in that small package. You just have to. Uh, resize the file and print it so that it fits. Uh, you only get two maps, but if you happen to have the full uh, D-Day Dice version, uh, you could just uh, scan them and uh, cut them, and print them and cut them to, to smaller size, and you could bring more maps with you. Uh, if you want to keep track of how many soldiers, stars, medals, and whatnot you have, uh, you can bring one of the dials that the original comes with, or you could just write it down somewhere uh, on a piece of paper. I also made uh, these dials, all right, out of uh, those Ultra Pro token, uh, those dials that they pretty much were, people were giving them away back in the day. There was a point where these were really cheap, so I had a, a few of them, and I just printed that stuff in it to keep track, uh, to basically turn it into an extra set uh, of uh, this, to keep track of the information. But uh, there's an interesting, neat little package if you can get a hold of it. Uh, you get two games included in the box. There's, al there's also stuff to support. Uh, they die second edition, it adds more modules. And uh, if you print this stuff, you get a third game in the box. So pretty interesting package, as you can see. And you're not gonna have a problem fitting this in a, um, in a airplane. Uh, tray, uh, trust me. I already mentioned that uh, you can uh, you can just go ahead and uh, use one of these. If you roll your roll your dice, and there you go. And all you have to do is just move this along uh, the beach, okay? And that's uh, D Day Dice Pocket. Interesting little uh, game if you can get a hold of it. Moving on, we have the Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. I've already discussed this game in a previous list of mine. Uh, but this is a roll and ride, and the first one of the genre that I tried since I started the hobby. 
and it's still a staple for me when I go on trips uh, for how minimalistic it is. I really think it offers a wonderful experience. And as you can see from the example here, when looking at the sheet size, it should fit on uh, it should fit on a uh, airplane tray, no problem. And uh, I lined up the inside of the box with um, a burgundy colored felt so that I could use it as a uh, nice tray. Okay, but of course you can use the other method that I mentioned as well. Um, the other thing is, uh, so this game comes with um, four different sheets, all right, to keep you busy, all right, four different maps, A, B, C, and D. And uh, one little bonus uh, thing, uh, if you like Catan as, um, uh, if you like that uh, product uh, line, there's also Catan dice game, all right. Now, I think this game is, doesn't even remotely come close to having the amount of uh, meat that this game offers. I feel that uh, this experience is a bit richer, but uh, as a bonus, this these two games actually fit back in the same box, okay? Uh, so, uh, check this out. So, you can throw this in here, and uh, there you go. Those are the Catan dice, and there's the uh, Castles of Burgundy dice, and you got your pen, and boom, there you go, see? And you have two games in one box. Uh, so uh, there's that. If you find that Catan game on sale or something, or maybe if you already own it, you get two games in one box. Uh, so that's Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. Next, we have Palm Island, another in-hand card game. And this is one of my biggest travel staples. I pretty much don't go on any trip ever without bringing this with me. I already mentioned this in another list of mine. Uh, I think it's a wonderful uh, minimalistic game. Uh, you play everything in your hand, and uh, there's very light, it's very lightweight as far as rules go, but it offers a pretty satisfying experience for uh, the minimal amount of components. And I suggest that you get the plastic version, since these cards are going to see a lot more punishment than uh, most cards. So yeah, uh, the deluxe plastic version is the way, to, uh, the way to go, in my opinion. So that's uh, Palm Island, definitely one of the best travel games you can buy. And finally, we arrive at my undisputed champion as far as portable solo board games go. This is Dragons of Etching Stone. And I honestly believe that relative to its 18 card component limit, uh, nothing offers a better experience than this. This is a game that you can buy from the Game Crafter and you can also get the print and play files. And this is the original package it comes in, but it doesn't fit the cards uh, sleeve. So, uh, I actually carry it in one of these uh, Dragon Shield Cube shells. And there's also an Ultra Pro uh, equivalent product. Uh, lots of Magic uh, players use these for uh, Cube. And uh, I think it's perfect for carrying print and play uh, button shy games or just any kind of sleeved game under 18 or 20 or so cards fits great here. So, this is where I carry it. Uh, but uh, this is a game that it's designed to be played in hand, but one thing that I love about this that Maiden's Quest and Palm Island lack is the fact that I can actually just play this on a table. And sometimes when playing uh, Palm Island after a while, uh, my, heart, my hand just starts getting strained. So I really appreciate that uh, Dragons of Etchingstone allows me to just play it on a table. Uh, so this game uh, is uh, basically, it takes a very mage night experience, which is a um, a fan favorite solo board game, and it distills it into 18 cards, and it's simply incredible uh, how it pulls that off and how it utilizes uh, just 18 cards to the max. And basically, what you're gonna do is uh, you have a deck of 16 cards that you're gonna use to uh, travel and to fight your way through four regions, okay? And once you pass through the four regions, you're gonna uh, face a dragon at the end. And uh, once you get the hang of the rules, this could last you from tw uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, that's what it lasts me on average anyway, but the decision making here is just so crunchy and satisfying. Uh, this is not included, this is like a photocopy that of what goes on the back of the uh, what goes on the back of the packaging. And this is, once you I learned the rules, this is pretty much the only thing I reference 
uh, to remind myself of the iconography. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, just be warned, this is a bit heavier on the heavier side compared to a lot, the majority of the other games that I shared. Uh, the rule book is uh, 24 pages long, and uh, once you, but it's, it's, it's worth it 100% uh, learning it. And the rule book's really well made. I rarely ever have to re revisit it. And I don't really ever go anywhere. Uh, like if I know I'm going to stay somewhere, uh, I, don't, I, I always take this with me. Uh, this is gonna be permanent, a, a permanent addition to uh, my um, bags uh, when I pack when I pack for trips and things like that. And honestly, I think the Palm Island and Dragons of Etchingstone combo. Uh, this is a powerhouse of uh, solo board gaming that will keep you entertained without any devices anywhere you go. The, I just pair these two things and I'm good to go. Really love these two in-hand games uh, because of, you know, I don't need a table. It's just awesome. Uh, but yeah, the majority of the time, though, I do play this uh, on a table rather than in hand. And as you can see, it, it barely occupies any space. You will need a bit more room just for the discard pile. Uh, but that pretty much is it. Uh, you're going to have your deck here. Uh, and you can even just stack the dragon and the region card. Uh, but very, very little table space and just such gr such a great experience. Uh, with the decision making uh, it offers, it's just uh, just a uh, just deterministic combat and uh, just incredible how much it packs in just eighteen cards. So can't recommend this enough. But if you wanna uh, if you wanna read a bit more about it, or sorry, hear more uh, a bit more about it from my perspective, just check out the review. And then uh, there's also a playthrough if you wanna if you wanna learn how to play it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Dragons of Edgingstone, My number one portable uh, uh, travel game. All right, and now bonus round. Uh, I wanted to make sure I mentioned this because this is another category of games that is pretty popular. So these are uh, print and play one or two page uh, games that you know you can just buy the files and print them on paper and take them with you and if you want a firm surface you can just get a clipboard and I'm gonna link uh, these uh, threads these pages in the description uh, so this is a list of uh, games that are suitable for example if you wanted to play them on a tablet okay uh, I do try to keep things analog in general I you know if I want to play board games in general I typically uh, like to avoid uh, using electronics although it's not mandatory for me anyway but uh, there's a couple examples here. So, for example, you have Voyages. Uh, this is a pretty popular uh, one-page uh, game. And you just need to bring your own dice and print the file, and it's pretty cheap. I haven't tried this myself yet. There's also, by the same folks that did uh, Voyages, there's Aquamarine. Uh, so that's just a couple examples of pretty popular games that only require... Uh, you, you to print them and they provide a few dice and there's an entire thread here of games that uh, some of them are free some of them are paid that might be suitable for this uh, category and also there's an entire thread of people discussing how they use e-readers uh, for um, uh, uh, e-paper uh, e-readers for um, uh, print and play uh, roll and write game purposes, which I find pretty interesting. I just think in my in, in my case, I think that that these are a bit too expensive these types of devices. Uh, but maybe uh, when they come down in price, uh, I'll probably buy it uh, just for this purpose because I do find it pretty amusing. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to make sure I mentioned this. Uh, I think it would have been at the service if I didn't bring this up. So this is a very nice category of games that would. Be, should be perfectly fine for you to play on a airplane tray. And there you go, folks. So those are my 10 picks for games that are suitable to play on a airplane tray. And if you have any suggestions, I'll be really happy to hear them. Please put them in the comment section. If you enjoy this content, uh, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one.